We're going to listen now to the Sunday School teaching transmitted by satellite from Presbyterian in Brazil. Maranatha Christian Church is present in all the continents, in the three Americas, Europe, Africa, Asia, and Oceania, connected with the same doctrine by the Holy Spirit and united by the Living Word. People from all of the parts of the world participated in the same service in one Accord in one spirit. Through the system of transmission by satellite, the members of the Maranatha Church in the whole world live a moment of unity and fellowship as the Hebrews left Egypt and the disciples with Jesus in the death event of Jesus Christ in the cross. People from all over the world is being reached out by the living gospel and the message of the the coming, second come of Jesus, which is soon. We'd like to greet everyone receiving this transmission with the peace of the Lord Jesus. We are here to participate in the Sunday School teaching of Maranatha Christian Church. We do that every Sunday morning, transmitting to all the churches. And we are transmitting from the main center of transmission in Vila Verde Espírito Santo. And we are counting on Braden from the Church of Guarapari in the Spirit of Santo State. Together we have a special participation of some pastors from their region and also with other pastors from the East Europe. We would like to mention their names the presence of Pastor from Crimea and Pastors of Samara, Vasily, Igor and Anatoly, Pastors connected to Maranatha Church in the Russia area. Ukraine as well, we have representatives Pastor Pavel, which is the director of the seminar, and the sister Alexander, she is the teaching director. And the last month of October, we participated and they, they reached out for us, and now we are together. Our uh, activity in 
in the whole world work abroad. We have deacons being raised in Lisbon, in one of our churches, in Portugal, Lisbon, in Uruguay, seminar in the capital, Montevideo, the city of Melo, Sarandi, and the brethren that could receive from, from Brazil transmitted with Pastor Gilberti. This activity in the exterior and also in Brazil, in other areas, Feira de Santana, Bahia, we have seminar, also Prado in Bahia, and the ladies seminar in Belém, in the state of Pará. We had a class transmitted by Pastor Gilberto Chigueiras for this special seminar in life. Itabela, Prado, and Feira de Santana. All the events this week, it was a vigil for the special service on the 24th of November called Trumpet and Feasts next 24 of November. So this vigil was in the city of Geronimo Monteiro, the interior of the state of Espírito Santo. Also in Teófilo Tony, Minas Gerais, and also the city of Passo Fundo in the state of Rio Grande do Sul. We had a appendix. We have a conclusion of the, the class. Also we have a seminar with uh, lang sign language in Governador Valdares, Minas Gerais. Also in Queimados, Rio de Janeiro. We had a workshop of sign languages. The Church of Maranata in Etelvina Carneiro, Belo Horizonte, Minas Gerais. And also a anniversary of Cacoal, Rondonia, in the north of Brazil. Also the great evangelizations, remarkable in Ribeirinha, São José, in Amazon. 24 hours, boat trip, leaving Manaus, great results, great experiences. After the seminar, we also had a special service in Feira de Santana, Bahia right after the seminar and this evangelistic service uh, we had more than 1,000 participants. There was a great number of visitors at this service. Another great evangelization in Barra Mansa, Rio de Janeiro, Itabela, Bahia, 1,200 people Praise the Lord. Another one in Piabetá, Rio de Janeiro, and Rocinha, Rio de Janeiro. We had also some baptisms. Cascavel, Paraná, Espera Feliz, Minas Gerais. Guarulhos, São Paulo, em Magarça, Rio de Janeiro, Matipó, Minas Gerais, e também Medeiros Neto, Bahia. Baptisms, Posto da Mata, Bahia, e também São José dos Campos, São Paulo, Belo Horizonte, Minas Gerais, and in our amphitheater of Jaburuna, Vila, uh, Vila Velha, Espírito Santo, with Braden from Aribiri and other uh, cities in Vila Velha. Now we would like to inform 
That is, we are having a volunteer together, get together in the Manaim of the Espírito Santo, preparing the place for the, the event of the 24th of November. So, several members are volunteering to help remodel the place. It was a great feast. We have great expectations. Everyone should invite families and friends for this, as God has a special message for everyone. So, closing this announcement, we'd like to say that more and more information will be published in Money Radio, so you can have online access. Now we're going to start our Sunday school teaching. The word is with Pastor Shidochi to do the introduction in the book of Matthew. We greet all with the peace of the Lord. We are back in bringing everything which is necessary for this special prophetic moment that we are living in. It's very interesting to know that the pattern of the subjects, it's not a, like a silly sequence, not because someone is suggesting something, no. Everything comes by revelation from the Holy Spirit. And we are following, obeying these instructions, uh, reminding everyone that the announcements made here related to the events, baptisms, doesn't mean anything It's not more important than others because there is several thousands of uh, emails and messages and we, like we pick some. I'd like to leave clear that everyone that participated in the Sunday School teaching or any other service or activity, anyone and everyone can address to the presbytery bringing problems, complaints or needs from your church. Sometimes you have an issue with a worker. Sometimes there is somebody with a physical uh, health problem. Or maybe some churches need more assistance. Some flocks are not being taken care. We know that we have a great number of churches, but you can email us and you can mention any need so whatever is possible we can help do not be afraid to let us know it's very important for us in the, in other hand on the other hand we have all the, all the facts all the subjects in the life of the church even something that is not pleasant our testimony is very important. If you see somebody uh, publishing th something in the media that is not uh, according to our doctrine, let us know. In your private life you can do anything, but uh, when you publish something related to the work of the Holy Spirit, that is another subject. Nobody can use the church facilities for any other thing besides the activities from the church. And later on to publish on the media because that will compromise our reputation. We have men, we have ladies, children that depend on the place that we are preserving the the morale of the church the gospel of jesus christ is not related to a, a feast that is not related to the gospel of jesus christ so we like to have that very clear to
to everyone, if this is happening, if something is happening different, then what, what we have as a line of conduct, ethics, so we need to be watching closely. We know the value of the work of the Holy Spirit and if someone is making a bad use, we need to address. We are paying the price and we have to preserve our image as a church that spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Decency is very important. We like to be communicated about any bad behavior of someone that is working in the front of the flock. Last Sunday, our subject was the parable of the wedding. The, the head of the household and it invited everyone and he found someone in the, in the feast that was not dressed accordingly. So last week, we noticed that the moment certainly is not for a church that is living in the right position as a faithful church, knows the baptism of the Holy Spirit, gifts of the Holy Spirit, so they know the, the, the song and they know that Jesus is at the door. At the end, we know, we are not saying anything but whatever is written in the Bible and it's safety for us. We are inviting people now to watch, to participate in the 24th of November, so the church is supposed to be announcing So, next Sunday, do not do anything but if someone that you love and you would like to invite, so we have several ways to invite. We hide, we hide a company to take care of the, the announcements because our system will start before on the 24th. So if someone is trying to watch, besides the internet, the, the, the channel, the TV channel band, uh, uh, band in Brazil will be transmitting. And all the, the uh, concessions in small cities will be reproducing. We'd like, like to leave clear that we're not going to say anything related to Maranatha as an institution. But our concern is about the signs and the prophecies in the Bible, the questions that the world, that the world are meeting, the people in the world are meeting. So whoever wants to be informed is just to open the Bible and to continue listening and understanding. So many questions, it's an existential crisis. They want to know the answers. They don't know how to answer to all the situations going around the world and we are doing diagnostics. We have a concern, a concern at this moment to do what is our role as a church, our mission. We don't want to promote Maranatha Church as an institution. We are not trying to steal anybody from other churches, but our concern is to show, to answer all the questioning of the world 
at this moment that we are living, prophetic moment. For us, it's historical and prophetical. We will, we will show to the people of the world, the ones that are confused about the, the prophetic moment we are living. We will answer all the questioning and we will make it clear of the prophecy and the actual prophetic moment. What is happening in the world, what's happening in the, the Israel, in all the churches, differences, that will, uh, we're going to make it clear so people will understand the difference between the faithful church and the unfaithful church. Historically, Bible has its beauty for salvation, but prophetically, people need to understand clearly that we are facing a prophetic moment and everything that is happening is supposed to happen to fulfill the prophecy. And this is within the project of God, it's a divine project for this world. And our role, our mission is that all the people like is being invited even though the ones that doesn't look worthy they are being invited according to the parable studying since last week whatever is historic and whatever is prophetic The beauty of the Bible is to share the prophetic we need to spread we need to understand that the word the word of God that has a beauty that starts from Genesis to Revelation there is a line that goes from one to another and it can be divided, it can be sectioned but whatever is prophetic the project of God for man so whatever God is preparing for this moment your mind can be working in reason but the revelation doesn't know the the reason but it brings and to enhance to enhance the value of the spiritual let's go to the parable of the parable pastor Jusson now we're going to study the historical the workers, the laborers. So we're going to put here the, the laborers of the last moment. Directly, we are living the prophetic last moments. The questions and the answers will be for the church. Pastor Gilson has the word. Now the questions, now reading Matthew 20, verses 1st to 16th, the parable of the laborers and the times, the shifts. The question is, what is the emphasis of the parable for this time? And the emphasis for this parable time is referring in the word in the church thank you the time of the blessed moment we're going to work now in the question of chapter 20 verse 1 to 16 
Now, related to this question, let's participate on this Sunday School teaching. The question is, what is the emphasis of the parable for this time, for our time, referring in the parable, especially the time of the last moment? Amen. All the brethren that knows uh, can participate. If you, someone want to say something, we're going to give opportunity for the church to participate. The parable talks about a journey of work of the day and what is the, the shift that we are living? What is the time? We are the labors of the last time. The brother answered. Uh, the brother answered that the emphasis is at the last time, the different times of the day, but the emphasis is for the final time of the journey. This is will be the subject that we'll be discussing along the study for today. This was the first answer. Let's go for the second question. So we can optimize the subject related to this subject. The second question is, why did the father, the head of the, the household, left by the early dawn to, to hide laborers for his vineyard? Why did he leave in the early dawn? Why in the early dawn? What does the early dawn talk about? The early dawn talks about the moment of the most courageous one. The beginning of the day, we can say, the moment of the creation, the Genesis, since the beginning, The project is ready from the eternity. <laughs> the time talks about the creation of everything. So he already has a project from eternity. So the project, the eternal project, uh, already exists from since eternity. This is the reference of the prophetic expression early dawn. I think this subject is very important. In reality, when it talks about the project being ready, so when you study the creation, later on, when you go to Proverbs, and you see that how the world was created, was formed, before the world being formed, Jesus was present there, and he already see the world full of the people so he could see everything God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit so even before they finish they see the populated world so the project as a church was already made established project of salvation so the project of creation and the pro project of salvation being shown since the beginning, which is talks about prophetically eternity. So this parable talks about the beginning, 
of the product of man for God, uh, the uh, product of God for man. And uh, we are now seeing the, all the phases of the day, all the shifts uh, to the end. So even before the day start, God has his project in his mind before the world exists. So the early dawn in this text talks about eternity. The love of the Father, the mercy, the grace, and his great interest in salvation for the man. So nothing came from man. Everything came from the heart of the Lord, the heart of God. Now let's go for the third question. First, uh, question number three. What is the final target in this parable and what the Lord does uh, wants us to understand and to teach us in this parable? What does the Lord wants us to understand in this parable? And what teaching we can take from this parable? The, the sister is saying that there is no such a thing as time of working to have more merit or rewards for the time that you are living in the church. The price is the same. The price is the salvation that Jesus paid on the cross. And that's why it talks about one coin. It represents salvation. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <coughs> it's for this time. So the price will be paid at the end. And the Lord is teaching us that the parable is for our time. Now let's check the, the answer. We will call for this time, the moment that the church is leaving, the, the, the main uh, purpose of the parable is to under, let us understand that we are leaving the moment of sun. And what the Lord is teaching us, teaching us is that the parable is towards to our time, the time that we are living now, the time of sun. Now, let's go to the fourth question. And the fourth question is, what is the main characteristic of, in the parable of the labors of the last time? Taking in consideration the prophetic moment for our days. What is the, the main concern of this parable? thinking about the prophetic moment for our days. Let's work on this question, fourth, uh, the fourth question. Let's see what the teaching the Lord has for us. The church can participate in. Anyone can, can participate. The parable talks about the times, the shifts. The lady is saying that the field, the harvest is great. There is space and opportunity for all of us. 
And at the end, it's saying that the first will be the last, and the last will be the first. But the main character is the night talks about the moment of conciliation, the reconciliation of the the shift and the pay, the payments. The moment of the night is the time to for the, the, the payment to be made. So if you have your lamp lit, if you're ready, it's time to to face the the head of the household, the king that called the workers for the vineyard. And approaching the night says to the so when evening had come, the owner of the vineyard said to his steward, Call the laborers and give them their wages, beginning with the last to the first. So now we see two very important points. The night and the moment of the reconciliation of the workers and the payments related to their work. The, taking us to the prophetic moment of our days. It's the moment of the, the, the judgment. So I wish everyone found the same answer. A very important observation. <coughs> and this parable we're going to find before the day which is the early dawn, when the man was made, project was ready, and the first call. They call the team that was not at the beginning of the project, but he put them, put them in the project. Those, those were the ones that were like in the beginning. So the, the, the early dawn, the night falls, they didn't have uh, electricity, so they wake up when the birds start to chirp, and at the 9 a.m. approximate for our days, they call the group of workers. So they saw some people seated and chatting at the public square. So they were like doing, without doing anything. And for last, they called another group. So they stayed all day without doing anything. So they were without knowing anything. The moment that you are living in. So they were all day long without doing anything, but now you're being called. It's us. It talks about us. So of this big crew, the ones that didn't know the idle, idle people, they were without doing anything. We need to understand that the call of God is the same. It's not for the one that doesn't need. The vineyard, which is the, the work of the Holy Spirit, it doesn't need anything. We need them. We need the, the work of the Holy Spirit. And for the closing of the day, how does the man, the mankind, put themselves? They might see as important for, to, the, to themselves, but it's not. So whoever was called in the morning, by the noon, and in the afternoon, so there, there's no difference before God's point of view. Why the Bible says the last will be the first? For the rapture of the church will take even the last ones. 
the first ones, they are already there. But the last ones will be raptured. raptured. So it will be a great benefit. That's why our great uh, role is to announce the word. And this is what we will do on the 24th. The signs are here. It's not Maranatha Church, but accept Jesus. If you want to be part of any church, it's your problem, it's your decision. But we need to understand that we are called without value in ourselves. So the moment now, our moment, is the moment for the one that stayed idle for all day long. It's not me, it's not me saying that. So it's, say, it's talking about all of us. There is no justification for God. See what, how God sees it. For Him, it's only one thing. The justification comes from Him. It doesn't matter what time you start. Oh, I did that. I did good deeds. So God is not worried about that. He's not concerned. It's not our endeavor that counts for God. Let's use a, a collaboration from a pastor. So it was not the man that went after the, the vineyard uh, work. The God went out. So like the Bible says, God saying to man, it was not you that found me, but I found you. So when you go to the house of the Lord to meditate upon the word, I'm doing that for God. I'm, I'm doing that as a good deed. No, that's silly. Let's understand better what Bible says about the project of God. Now, at the end, the last question now. Whoever uh, got this answer right can go home. Now, Pastor Gilson. So, Matthew 20, 1 to 16, the parable of the labors of the last moment, describe the elements of Trinity, how to identify the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In this verses from Matthew 20, 1 to 16. You have to identify the, the elements of Trinity and also shows the, the church in the language of this parable. Amen. Anyone want to give an opinion? First, where is the Father? And the answer, what text? The, the head of the household. So the man left in the early dawn to find, find the workers for his vineyard. So the son is the prize. And who is the steward? And why the Holy Spirit is the steward? As the father calls the steward, and he is the one that will go out and make the payment. The time for the closing and for the 11th hour. Who is the vineyard? Is the work of the Holy Spirit? Is the project, the church, the faithful church? Let's read verse 7. They said to him, because no one hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. Go to my vineyard and you receive whatever is right. So the last... Observe that you found verse 1, verse 2, verse 4 and 7. 
reference for the vineyard. Now the final is where to identify the sun. And you're going to examine and you have to find the figure of the sun. So you identify the Father, the Holy Spirit, the church. So the church is the one which is the result of the Trinity. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The result is the church. Now let's work to find out who is the Son. We're going to have a participation for this answer. Everybody looking to identify the Son in this text. <coughs> Everyone working on the question. We are waiting for the church to participate. Certainly, the answer will be matching with the answer that the church have found in the church, uh, the people of the church. I would like to say that I have learned. It was a result of a learning. What is beautiful in this teaching, several good information we received. The beauty is the moment for the payment as the project of redemption is since before creation is the lamb that was offering himself since before the world is made so the father has one pay time project his uh, project is alliance the commitment was made on a cross it's one payment, one salvation, one coin, one eternal life, one pray, one price. And what is important in this figure? It's more glorious when we can read together. So when the evening had come, the owner of the vineyard said to us to recall the laborers, give them their wages, the, the pact that the Father did to us, one salvation in Christ. He went to the Calvary. He died for my sin. He had established a wage in his vineyard. The price of the blood is a high price. And what is marvelous in this parable is that by the time that he is about to call for the payment. The glorious thing is that he's going to give to all of them, no matter what time they start, something that we didn't deserve. There's no righteous, righteousness on ourselves. The most important thing to understand is the salary we didn't deserve. It's not from merit, but from grace. It's uh, undeserved merit. We were called for this vineyard. It's a privilege to be part of the vineyard. We didn't deserve to be here. And we are now the ones that were hired at the last moment. The idol are the ones that had, com had no commitment with anything, with the, especially with the project of God. So the most important for God is to be involved in the vineyard, in the project. So we're not called by our endeavors, but we are called by grace. And it's one salvation, eternal life. It's a, it's a blood that has no sin. We don't deserve. So this wage, it's very important to recognize the justice of God. He is just. He is a just uh, a God, righteous God. So... It was given to us that we have no righteousness in ourselves. Whoever called us to work in the vineyard was him. 
everything belongs to him. He do whatever he wants with which is. So blessed be God that has called us, that we are here in this vineyard working for his glory and we're going to receive something that we don't deserve because it's by grace. The grace of Jesus makes us inheritance of eternal life. There is a detail here that denarius, it was a coin made with silver, so it's salvation. It's a symbolic symbol of salvation, of the commitment from God to the mankind. Amen. So we are closing now the Sunday school teaching and remembering that this is the message for tonight's service. Peace of the Lord to everyone. Amen. Any more comments from the church, Pompano's church? Anyone want to add anything? Comment? Any more comments? It's important to remember when God has called, when the, the, the man of the vineyard called, the landowner, the vineyard was ready. The project was ready. So he, he called us to be part of the project that was already made. He doesn't call us to make the project. And another good details, detail is the time of the payment. He ha he's the one that called. But when, when is the time for the payment? He, he, he delegates to the steward. So the Holy Spirit, He is calling us to enter in the presence of the landowner to receive the righteous payment. What payment was accorded? It's one money, one denarius, silver, salvation. Among this team of workers, they have worked several shifts. Some of them thought that they, they should earn more. But salvation is not by good deeds, but for grace. And some said, Lord, we, we face the, the, the heat of the day and the easy moment of the day. We participated in several difficult moments. Shouldn't we get more? The, the calm of the day, the ease of the day, and the moment of rush. The, the comfort zone sometimes is worse than the heat of the day. Because when you're in the heat of the day, sometimes you seek more for the Lord because you are in trouble, in anguishing. And when it's easy, sometimes you let the guard down and you go to the comfort zone. So we have to think about that. And they thought they could receive more because of that. I, I am in the work of the Holy Spirit for 30 years, 40 years. So I work very hard. So you should work. It's right. So you, don't, you think you deserve more? Uh, Antonio, for example, he just arrived. <laughs> I, I'm in the work of the Holy Spirit for 30 years. So I arrived. And you arrived now and you're being called my friend what we have accord what was the the pact that i have done with you and he called him friend the pact the commitment the alliance is salvation the price the day that i have called you i called you to save you and if you have all the benefits it's not important. The most important thing is the part that I'm giving you. What I have uh, accorded to you with you, salvation. But if you think it's not enough, take whatever is yours and leave. The agreement that, we, that God has made with us is to pay us with salvation. Amen? The children will sing a song.
Hallelujah. Uh, the church is standing out. Lord, we thank you for this instant that we have enjoyed a fellowship with your Holy Spirit. For all your grace that is being poured out upon us. To uh, per your people at church, we want to present to you our children to make the lesson to your hands. Their hand may be laid upon them, you know, to deliver them. That's their homes, Lord. And for love to them and also to any of all of their family members. Take us home in peace. We pray in the holy name of Jesus. In the name of say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, of a good and eternal Father, and the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be with the people of God, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. Once again, I'd like to remember, remind you, on the 24th, the shout, the cry, the alert, the trumpets, and and the service, we can say, the evangelization is geared towards whom? The brother said, go to the streets and, and bring the lame, the blind, the cripple and so that my house is filled amen so now pick up the thing that was that was shared here uh, the invitation put on your whatsapp and your instagram and invite everyone amen peace of the lord jesus we have a meeting now with group a you group b também Grupo A e Grupo B reunião. Grupo A e Grupo B.